This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on atmospheric chemistry and we're looking at ozone and how ozone forms chemically in the atmosphere and in particular the stratosphere and how ozone functions and also how ozone can be broken down and the chemical reaction can be repeated in this layer of the atmosphere. So when looking at atmospheric science, atmospheric chemistry, it's very important to consider ozone as this larger molecule in the atmosphere naturally occurring. It is composed or consists of three oxygen atoms. And in between the oxygens, there's one covalent double bond and one single bond. So ozone is located in the stratosphere. About 90% of the ozone in our atmosphere is found in the stratosphere. There's a small percentage found in the troposphere, which is the, considered the bad ozone. And the one in the stratosphere is considered the good ozone in terms of the function and the purpose in terms of the natural reactions it has in the stratosphere. But it begins between 25 to 30 kilometers up and extends up to about 45 or 50 up to the stratopause. Now this is a thermal layer and the ozone layer actually creates an increase in temperature due to the reactions and actually heats the stratosphere as you go higher in altitude. So this is a reverse or an inversion to what happens in the troposphere as it gets colder as you go higher in altitude. So you take molecular oxygen, which is O2, which is how oxygen generally forms in the atmosphere. It's, it's, it's a stable state. And it's a covalent bond, which is very strong, that's connecting these two oxygen atoms together in this molecule. And what you have is that when this interacts at a certain altitude and you have an amount of oxygen in the atmosphere, the reaction with energy or a photon which is a certain wavelength of energy and the H is the Planck which is the universal standard for energy in a photon plus the speed of light you get the breakdown or dissociation of this oxygen molecule into two separate free radical oxygens. Now these are very energized and very easily able to react with other atoms and gases in the atmosphere and what tends to happen is that the single oxygens fly around and they generally go and connect with another oxygen. So this energy is hitting oxygen at around 30 kilometers in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere, and it has a certain wavelength or energy, all right? And the energy to break the bonds is called the bond dissociation energy, which is around 400 and 98 joules per mole. So this is the energy required to break that covalent bond to separate the O2 into two separate oxygens and begin the formation of ozone. So what happens is you have this single oxygen that's going to fly around and, and bond with other gases in the atmosphere. The energy required to break apart oxygen, molecular oxygen in the atmosphere is around 242 nanometers. So it's a very, very small, high energy photon that is required. Anything smaller, uh, anything larger than that would not do the job, would not be powerful enough to break the covalent bonds. So what happens is this energy is only at certain altitudes in the atmosphere above or around 30 kilometers. Anything lower towards the surface, you don't get that energy so you don't really get the breakdown of oxygen. So ozone really is formed at a certain altitude based on where the energy is to form it. So after the breakdown of molecular oxygen into the free radicals, into the atomic oxygens, they're gonna fly around with high energy in the atmosphere at a certain altitude above around 30 kilometers up to about 50 kilometers then this free oxygen is going to bond easily with other oxygens, being that the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen and oxygen, about 99%. The oxygen is very easily bonded or sticking to other oxygens, 
and there are, is an abundance of oxygen in the atmosphere at this altitude, so the bonding is very quick. So what you have is you get this O2, this remain O2 in the atmosphere is going to bond quickly with this crazy energized free radical oxygen atom that's going to join in. So you have O2 plus a single oxygen equals O3, and O3 is ozone. It is a naturally forming molecule, larger molecule in the atmosphere, and it has one covalent bond and one single bond. So one double, one single. Now this makes it a little bit weaker as a molecule compared to the regular molecular oxygen. So the formation of ozone is called the Chapman mechanism or Chapman chain reactions from a 1930s English scientist called Chapman who had an idea or a theory that ultraviolet radiation was breaking down oxygen and forming ozone in the stratosphere. And this was then taken and studied by various scientists and so far this is the mechanism that we use today to explain the formation of ozone in the stratosphere. However, you form ozone, you can also break down ozone from its O3 components back into molecular oxygen and free radicals, or two molecular oxygens. So this happens the same way. It's the energy, the ultraviolet radiation energy, the wavelength that's going to break down the weaker bonds in the ozone O3 molecule, and it's gonna break it down into its different components. So when you add in the energy, the photon, the light, you're going to have dissociation. And however, it's slower. This happens less common. It's not as common uh, compared to the formation of ozone with O2 plus O because the ratio of O2 and O versus O3 is a lot smaller. So there's about 100,000 of oxygen molecules O2 versus O3 so 100,000 to 1 so the reaction is a lot slower about three times slower to break down ozone than it is to form ozone in the stratosphere so one way you could do it is you add the energy the Planck versus light versus the wavelength to the ozone molecule so the energy is hitting the ozone molecule in the stratosphere and bring it down into its original components molecular oxygen and free radical oxygen or uh, atomic oxygen or you can have o3 plus o addi additional oxygen plus the light and can form two separate molecular oxygen molecules so this happens over like one second intervals it's very very quick but it constantly repeats itself as a chain reaction in the atmosphere due to the presence of oxygen and the constant pre presence of UV. Now UV does fluctuate based on the flux we get from the sun, but it is generally kind of consistent uh, in certain areas, but it does fluctuate the amount over certain latitudes. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe.